could talk about anything I wanted to talk about with today's cartoon, Swooner Crooner from 1944, I would just be screaming into my microphone about why this cartoon is top-notch Warner's work. So today we'll be doing a fast fact sort of thing. My thanks in advance to Keith Scott for some of the help with the info. Fact number one. On the original titles for this cartoon, George Kanata received the sole animation credit. He was a Terry Toons animator who came and went to the Warner Studio at unknown times. I've done my research and I have my connections, but no one really seems to know a lot about this man. Fact number two. The production number for this cartoon was originally 2-15, which means it was intended to be one of the earliest releases for the 1945 Looney season. But clearly it was rushed out for some reason, because it was actually really smack dab in the middle of 1944. Fact number three. Dick Bickenback does the Bing Crosby chicken and the Sinatra chicken in this cartoon. The Warner staff was aware that Bick could sing well, so Tashlin cast him in the two parts. Clampett later cast him as the Frank Sinatra caricature in his book review a few years later. Bickenback was animating for Fritz Freeling at the time, and shortly afterwards he would join the Tashlin unit to work on some of Tash's last Warner cartoons. Fact number four. A guy named Sammy Wolf does the Al Jolson, Nelson Eddy, and Jimmy Durante chickens in this cartoon. Wolf was a nightclub comic that caught the attention of Bob Clampett, who cast Wolf as the dog in Hair Ribbon. Tashlin liked Wolf and cast him in these parts shortly afterwards in Swooner Crooner. Fact number five. When Tashlin was working on a film with Crosby called Say One For Me in the late 1950s, Crosby told Tashlin that he hated the chicken caricature of him in Swooner Crooner. And soon after, Tashlin actually told Bing that he directed that cartoon. Fact number six. The length of an original film print for this cartoon was 676 feet in length and would have lasted 7 minutes and 31 seconds long. 8 seconds longer than the blue ribbon print that we see on all the official home video releases today. Whether that extra 8 seconds was for the original title sequence, a deleted scene, or otherwise, I'll leave it up to you to draw your own conclusions. Fact number 7. According to Bob Clampett, Clampett was supposed to collaborate with Tashin on the egg-laying powerhouse sequence and make it a combination of traditional hand-drawn animation and stop-motion work. Sadly, this concept and idea never really got anywhere, but it wouldn't have been Clampett's first time working with stop-motion eggs, as evident by this stop-motion test that Clampett worked nights to finish with his pal Al Kendig in 1938. And finally, fact number eight. This cartoon was the only Tashlin cartoon to be nominated for an Oscar, but sadly lost to an equally excellent Tom and Jerry cartoon called Mouse Trouble. Which cartoon is better? I'll let you decide that. But you can't deny that both cartoons have stellar animation, as you can most obviously tell from this scene with phenomenally good perspective by Cal Dalton. <laughs> I hope you liked today's episode, gang. We'll be back here Monday for more freeze framing and facts, so I'll see you then.